Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at Bargain Basement Bathysphere. Now this is a solo roll and write kind of campaign game. Now I tend not to play a lot of solo games. The few that I do have I really enjoy, but I tend not to gravitate them when I'm looking for a game to play. Now this one caught my eye because of the theme and the idea that you play through 20 scenarios basically to tell the entire story of your Bargain Basement Bathysphere. So the theme is that you own one of these Bathysphere that's held together with nothing but duct tape, spit and hope. You can easily get to the bottom of the ocean, but the trick is to make it back to the surface safely. Now you're going to be doing various scenarios from saving trapped divers, to exploring underwater heat vents, to retrieving sunken treasure, to gathering evidence of a mysterious monster called, well, the murky one. Now the basics rule of the game are pretty basic. You roll your dice pool and activate each die one by one to move your bathysphere forward or backward that many steps. Now of course there are going to be hazards along the way causing you to deplete your resources. When you need to re-roll your dice, it's going to cost you some oxygen, and if you run out of oxygen, or there's too much damage, or you've just taken too much stress, then your dive is over. Now each scenario will have a different objective and could introduce additional rules which build upon the previously learned rules, so the game gets kind of more and more complex with the scenarios. Now it never gets overly complicated, but definitely, definitely wraps up nicely. So will this game rise to the surface to be a great game, or should it just be left in the dark depths of the ocean? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back to my final thoughts on Bargain Basement Bathysphere. So this is Bargain Basement Bathysphere set up. Since this is a campaign game that opens up more rules and mini games as you progress, I'm not going to be going over all the rules you're going to learn, just the basic rules that you're going to be using in each game. I'm going to put aside the mini game pad, and this will be used in later scenarios. I'll also just be showing off the first map boards and the basic components, so I'll put all the other things aside. The game is scenario based. You can play through all the scenarios in order to get the complete story of the game, and they will describe which map to use, which part of the map to use, because no scenario uses all the space on the board, so the scenario will also show you which part of the map you're going to be using. You'll also be told how many dice to use, and if there are any specific rules for that scenario. Once you set up the scenario, you'll place your bathysphere on the starting position and roll the dice. From your rolled dice, you'll pick one of them as your active die. You must move your bathysphere forward or backwards that many steps. Once you start moving in one direction for that die, you can't reverse direction until you select the next die. There are two colors of spaces on the board, white spaces and gray spaces. The gray spaces are usually bad, but they also could be blank. When you pass over a gray space, you must activate the action on that space, which will usually be bad. They will usually require you to mark off a resource, then cross off the gray space you just passed over. Your resource meter is here on the board. There are three resources, oxygen, damage, and stress. If you deplete any of them before you reach the surface, you have failed the scenario. So you will cross off the resource you just passed over. If you pass over a gray space that has already been activated, you do not action it again, unless it's a split gray area like this one. In this case, the first time you pass over it, you mark off whichever half you want. On the second pass, you mark off the second action. Now if you land on an unmarked gray space, you do cross it off, but you do not take the action on it if there is an action on that space. The white spaces contain a variety of unusual actions that will be introduced during the campaign, so I'm not going to go into them here, but generally, white spaces are the good spaces. A scenario will usually tell you that you're going to descend, do something while down there, then come back to the surface. During any of your movement, if you land at any time on a space that has been previously marked off for any reason, you must take a stress and mark it off on your stress resource meter. Once you've activated your die, you set it aside, and action another die in your active pool. If you ever run out of dice to action, mark off one oxygen from your resource meter, and re-roll all your scenario dice. One thing to be wary of, taking damage will slowly reduce the number of dice you can roll for the rest of the scenario. You will take damage from some grey spaces on the map like this one, but you can also receive damage from too much stress. If you pass certain spaces on the stress resource track, you'll also have to mark off a damage. When you reach the surface again, of course you're going to check if you successfully completed the scenario objectives and check the outcome of the scenario, and that will tell you what to do next. If you failed or didn't reach the required goals, it may tell you to move on or may even tell you to try again with different rules. So that's it for the very basics of the gameplay. But again, as you progress, you're going to be opening up more dangers, animals to see, things to retrieve, sites to see, and new abilities like the reroll, and you're going to be adding new rules. You'll also have mini games that can be added to change up how the game is played by giving you special abilities or starting with more resources or dice. Now, let's get back to see what I thought about Bargain Basement Bathysphere. Theme and components. 
I really like the theme on this one. It's just plain silly, but it's fun. It's carried throughout the rule book, and even the little intros to each scenario are amusing. The idea of the resource meters just makes sense. Having to manage the oxygen, damage, and stress, it makes thematic sense for what this game is. Now, how you're doing that, you know, rolling the dice and marking off spaces maybe isn't that thematic, but overall it works, you know, diving down and resurfacing. Overall, although maybe not mechanically thematic, the overall theme is definitely a fun one that I enjoyed. For the components, they were quite good for a roll and write. The map boards are nice and big and the marker works well, just make sure you wipe it off after each game. I do wish that there was an easier way to mark off which section of the board you were using. I appreciate that you maybe couldn't have a map for each scenario, but I found I spent the first few minutes of every game kind of marking up the board so I remembered where I could and couldn't go during that scenario. It's not a huge deal, but it wouldn't be nice, I just don't know how they would do it. Also, I found the rule book probably could have used a once over. The rules really didn't tell you about the stress resource affecting damage resource, which I thought was an oversight. Also, one of the scenarios in the book, uh, the map, I think it's number 11, it's impossible to do based on what's on in the book. I had to check Board Game Geek to see what it should have been. Other than those few minor issues, I really enjoy the rest of the components. On to the gameplay. This is a published version of a print and play game, and I can see why this was picked up to be published. I really, really enjoyed my plays this one. Each game is slightly different. You cannot attack the game the same way, you know, for each scenario. Sometimes you need to get to maybe a part of the board extremely quickly to save something or to find something. Other times you want to take your time and visit as many places as at once. The game also ramps up nicely in complexity. The bases of the game aren't complex, but you can assume by having to make some fun decisions as some of the side things you can do in later games carry over from game to game and can make future games easier. I also like that you were not forced to redo the same scenario again and again and again until you passed. Sometimes you did, but usually it was they were going to make it easier the second time around. Or might just say, move on, but next scenario, you're going to start with a penalty. I really like that. It kept me wanting to play. And I think that's really the major positive for me. This game, for as simple as the basics are, kept me wanting to come back to see what was next. Definitely do not read forward in the scenario book, as some of the decisions you make early on will impact what comes later. Nothing major, nothing you can't overcome, but will definitely change the way you approach maybe certain later scenarios. I think one of the main other reasons why I kept wanting to come back to this game is that the games are fast. It takes a minute or two to set up the scenario and maybe 15 to 20 minutes to play it. When I was done one scenario, most of the time I would want to play the next scenario right away, or maybe even three in one sitting. Even with the shortness of the game though, I felt I was still full of really good decisions. You know, which die to use? Which way to go? Which resource can I burn? Do I go after the side quest that might help me in future games, but maybe derail my current mission? The decisions are not deeply complex, but for a game that is this quick and light, those decisions definitely made this game more enjoyable. And the game is solo only though. There is no multiplayer option. Now there definitely are enough sheets uh, the mini game pad for multiple people to play so when you finish the game someone else or even you can go through it again because you only consume one of these per each time you go through a scenario and there's approximately 20 scenarios and i think there's 30 sheets so that's a lot of gameplay you, you could get out of this now there's not much i disliked about the game my biggest hurdle is honestly that it was a solo only game and for me that's not ideal although i had lots of fun playing i do tend to prefer and gravitate towards multiplayer games so would i recommend this game very much so. Even if you're not a solo gamer, this is a perfect time filler when you have 20 minutes to yourself and just want to play something quick, but still gives you things to think about. I like the theme and the components for this game. I liked how fast it was, but it still gave me something to think about. This was definitely not a game on rails. I liked the whole idea of, of the scenario as it introduced things at a good speed and kind of grew complexity and decisions from game to game. I like that the scenarios were different from each other. They all have the same idea. You go down, you do something, and resurface. But that doing part of the scenario was varied enough to keep me interested. For the negatives, I do wish that there was a better way to cover the portions of the map that you're not using. I also, the rule, I also wish that the rule book had maybe just one more pass through it. And the only other negative for me, and this is definitely a personal one, is that it is a solo only game. And that doesn't always work for me. But again, that piece is strictly a personal preference. Overall though, I'm going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10 and the Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. This is one of the few solo games, let alone a roll and write game, that varied enough from game to game that I always wanted to come back and see what was next. And that's fantastic for a solo game for me. And that's it for now. Until next time, thanks for watching.